At Speedcamp, we use a range of world-class technology to guide our coaching. In this video, I'm going to explain how we've been using the Catapult Vector S7 to analyze and monitor Shamar's bowling progressions. When Shamar arrived, we couldn't conduct a full profiling session as he hadn't bowled at max intensity for a few years. Our first task was to set out an objective goal for Shamar to follow, and due to the injury that he sustained, a shoulder impingement, we wanted to limit the amount of stress that his upper body had to endure when he bowled. Shamar was asked to control the amount of snap and force that he generated with his upper body. Catapult is the leading provider of GPS technology in cricket for a reason. It captures data at 10 to 100 times per second. As well as velocity data, they have a custom algorithm which detects when a delivery is bowled. The device can then backtrack from that moment to calculate how fast the snap of the upper body actually was. This is called rotation speed and it's calculated in degrees per second. Here we have the last 10 bowling sessions in the training camp. I'm just going to talk you through the data in each of these columns so you can understand how we use sports science and data to guide our coaching. I've blocked out the specific bowling speed data as that's confidential to Shamar, but from a global perspective, you can see that with each session, Shamar is bowling faster. And that's exactly how we planned his return to bowling. We wanted to ensure that he wasn't jumping significantly in speed with each session, but at the same time, we needed to make sure that he was developing the confidence and the ability to actually push it um, as he went you know, from session to session. The green highlight represents an increase, the yellow highlight represents the fact that he stayed the same, and the red highlight means that he got slower. The number within the box represents the amount of the change. As I said earlier, we wanted to minimize stress on the upper body, and therefore our focus was primarily on lower body mechanics and speed of run-up. As you can see here, Shamar's run-up speed in each of the sessions increased. In order for us to calculate how much intensity there is in the run-up, we needed to cross-reference this number with his actual top sprint speed. As you can see, Shamar started off by running in at around 56 to 60% of his top sprint speed, which, which isn't too much, but as he got more sessions under his belt, he started to run in a bit faster. As he approaches his takeoff, which is the jump, there's a very slight deceleration in terms of speed, but it's so small that it's negligible. I actually think of it more as maintaining uh, and not decelerating as such. From the takeoff to back foot contact, front foot contact and ball release, Shamar gets quicker. In the last column, we have the rotation speed, which pretty much hovered around the same number and that's exactly what we instructed Shamar to do. So, all of this data paints a very clear picture. Number one, it indicates that Shamar has a lot more room to push in his run-up intensity, as his last few sessions have been around the 70% mark, which is entry level. For run-up optimization, we're looking for bowlers to run in at between 70 to 85% of their max sprint speed. At 70%, you're coasting. You can think of that as your long spell bowling. At 85%, you're pretty much going all out. Anything above 85%, I've seen it being done before, but we don't recommend it because you, know, you can really start risking um, losing your timing, your coordination and control. We can also see that in Shamar's case, there is an evident positive correlation between run-up speed and ball speed. So the quicker he runs in, the quicker he bowls. As well as increasing his overall run-up speed, it's definitely of interest to make him a faster and more efficient runner, as we know that input energy is a key factor in his ability to bowl fast. Number two, as Shamar approaches takeoff, as I said before, he pretty much maintains momentum. So. I'd definitely be interested in exploring whether he can actually get more output from his bowling if he attacked the crease with those last few strides. And number three, we can see that an increase in speed through the crease is something that Shamar does well. So improving his athletic ability and bowling technique is only going to enhance this positive quality that he has. Uh, and number four, with rotation speed, which is basically the snap in his action. He's been purposely asked to keep things under control. However, with time and with more confidence, this is definitely an untapped area where Shamar can get more speed and explosiveness out of his bowling action. Lastly, the only two sessions in this chart that you can see uh, where Shamar didn't display an increase in speed are here and here. And let me just explain what happened. This session here took place very early in the morning, which he wasn't accustomed to. So we can only assume that the change in conditions 
resulted in a decrease in output. This session here was actually the first session that we had out in Dubai. So Shaman needed to adapt to the change of conditions. Uh, the grass here is grown on a sand base, which basically changes the texture and feel uh, of the surface. It's slightly harder to run in on, especially when there's a bit of moisture uh, in the surface. As you can see, the next session, Shamar pretty much bounced back in, you know, he's back to business. All in all, everything uh, has progressed exactly how we expected it to. Uh, and with the sheer amount of data that we now have on Shamar as a bowler, uh, it gives us really good clarity on exactly what contributes to his best performance. So with this data, uh, we can be very deliberate and very precise with his training and development.